does help with players. There's no doubt about it. As we saw there, a fair few in from Manchester as well. And they've got a real dilemma, Peter, as we were saying, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, team win. I think that the, the big thing is, as you say, the supporters really, I think that they can be a big bonus to them. If they get behind the side and start shouting and screaming and one thing and another, I think that the difference is that Manchester City will go out in a relaxed atmosphere, whereas probably the pressure's on Villa. But um, I've got a bit of a buzz. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to the game. I've just said to Sean that I would have rather been wearing that number four shirt. He just said he'd rather wear it anyway. You've got a bit of a buzz. I've got a bit of a buzz. Here we go. Super Sunday. Match commentators Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Well, it is a paradoxical day in the Premier League with Manchester United fans supporting Manchester City. City's fans, in principle at least, favouring the Aston Villa cause. As for the Villa followers, they want the first of four consecutive victories, which could still stop any note of triumph coming out of Old Trafford. For Ron Atkinson, a dilemma as to how best to replace the dependable Sean Teal, a decision that was partly influenced by the composition of the Manchester City side. Villa believe that David White will play through the middle, so Earl Barrett is switched to centre-back, where he did win his only England cap so far. Gary Parker was left out at Highbury, but he's back today in a midfield quartet, which again includes Tony Daly. Yeah, that was the only big question for me, is who would replace Sean Teal? And I thought all along it might be Earl Barrett, and I think that makes a sensible choice. It keeps staunting on that left-hand side, and that's a really potent area with Tony Daly ahead of him. But it's a number eight, I feel, restored to the side, Gary Parker, whose passing could be influential today. Well, those who know Peter Reid will believe him when he says he doesn't care who wins the championship this season. He wants to win today, which would li lift Manchester City back to fifth in the table. But Mike Sheeran joins the list of City injured, which already includes Steve McMahon, Ian Brightwell and Andy Hill, and not forgetting Paul Lake as well. Niall Quinn went to hospital after Monday's match against Liverpool and only came out yesterday, his back damaged by wear and tear but he's very keen to be part of a day when City have to be seen to be giving of their very best. Well, there was a lot of talk about injuries this week, but that looks a pretty strong Manchester City lineup. Rick Holden's been switched here from left to right. The midfield three will tuck in narrow, but watch for the number three, Terry Phelan, bombing up that left-hand side. Now, there's four players that really this game depends on. The two Villa strikers, Saunders and Atkinson, not scoring goals, but vitally important that they impress themselves on Vonk and Keith Curl. For referee Philip Don, it's the end of his Easter holidays today. Back to his headmasterly duties in the West London area first thing tomorrow morning. Conditions here, the sort that uh, any player would love to be involved in. A little bit of wind, perhaps, to slightly distract the length of the passing. But underfoot, it's smooth and short. Will Aston Villa be the same? Peter Reid to set the game in motion alongside David White. White, who scored six goals in his last four games against Aston Villa, including four here. And they intend, obviously, to try and make it a busy afternoon for Mark Bosnich. Four here for David White in one game. That was a couple of years ago. But Bosnich has been very hard to beat. Here's Neil Cox at right back. Fuller stepping up and winning the offside decision. That'll be something to look for. Well, I've got to be very careful. Two centre backs have got to get it exactly right. The full backs have got to be aware because there's someone with a piece of white now playing through the middle. 
Stepping up like that could be a risky business. Oh, tight on Saunders, perhaps too tight. It works in his way. Quinn. Here's Halton. Atkinson, Daly's come in from the left. Perhaps in danger of crowding it out. Very congested when Reed stepped in. And eventually, here is Rick Holden, left-footed, of course, but starting this game, as we showed you on our caption on the right-hand side. Manchester City is so concerned about their injuries that had Niall Quinn not been fit today, Keith Curl would have played up front. David Brightwell would have come in and uh, operated in the centre of defence alongside Michel Vaughan. But Quinn is out there. He's out there and he's such an important part of the, the way Manchester City play the game as well. And here's Gary Flitcock, who's been one of the finds of the season. In his preferred place in the middle of midfield today. We saw him on Good Friday perform heroically as a centre-back at Sheffield United. They do make it difficult for central defenders for the way they play. Aston Villa would love an early goal here. They feel they should have had one in their last home game against Coventry. Inside the opening 30 seconds, Daly and Atkinson put a chance wide. I think when you're in a section that, that, that Villa and Manchester United are in as well, Mark, if you get an early goal at home, as we saw against Sheffield Wednesday here at Villa Park recently, scored in the first couple of minutes and went on to produce a real stunning display here. Didn't get the early goal against Coventry and they looked very, very edgy from them. David White limped out of a challenge a moment or two ago on the far side. He uh, has been struggling with an ankle problem. And he wasn't too keen to go in against Steve Staunton then. Staunton goes on. Atkinson can't control it, came crisply at him. Quinn, who uh, read the direction of Coates' clearance. Feeling just intercepting, otherwise Gary Parker would have got in behind him and uh, it was onside as well. Flickcroft has gone astray. One or two passes from both sides. Not really finding their targets, but that's better from Houghton towards Parker and a cross game curl. looking towards the bench and then seemed to give them the thumbs up then but he's okay to go on well, he's missed many to, games no, he looked to get that knock and that sort of block tackle but he seems to have shaken off here's Fitzroy Simpson who's been out of favour recently Houghton connecting well not really looking at the ball, Barrett certainly was focused. Richardson. Here's Daly. They've been starved of too many recent sightings of Tony Daly here. Very much one of their own at Aston Villa. Born and bred close to the ground. And whether Saunders will get the sort of crosses that he's been missing perhaps with the absence of Steve Froggett over the last couple of months from Tony Daly is uh, one issue this afternoon Andy. Yeah I think the one thing though is Froggett is certainly a better crosser of the ball than Tony Daly, possibly not as quick, not so much of a goal threat himself Stephen Froggett but he has got good quality on the cross and I don't think it's any coincidence that both these barren runs this season have coincided, that's Dean Saunders' barren runs, have coincided with the absence of Froggett. Dean Saunders hoping for a change of luck but Manchester City haven't been the best of opponents for him a couple of years ago when he was with Derby he missed a penalty and Niall Quinn it was who saved it Quinn had had to go in goal when Tony Coton was sent off and that was a bad day for Derby all round they were relegated at the end of it Quinn was a hero for City Saunders uh, will certainly not have forgotten that day and of course, last season, playing for Liverpool, he missed the penalty at Main Road as well. Ah. 
but they do feel here at Villa, the management, that is, that if Dalian Atkinson had played more games since the turn of the year, maybe they would be in a more comfortable position vis-à-vis -vis Manchester United than they are at the moment. It's all speculation. Injuries very much part and parcel of this Premier League season. So much power in the Premier League game, but the title is going to be won by one of two culture clubs. It's a level that Peter Reid is trying to attain for his Manchester City. tight on Houghton. He is naturally left-sided Fitzroy Simpson, but I'm sure he will uh, tend to tuck into the centre when required. In case with uh, Villa having so much variety in that area, City might get to overrun. Good work by Atkinson coming from midfield. Here's Parker. Offside. That's going to be a feature today, I feel, offside. Can the two frontmen get their timing of the run exactly right? They've both got the pace that if they get free, then no one will catch them. Manchester City, as you can see here, they like to push up. There they go, but Daly and Atkinson, and it's very close to Ray Ransom on the far side there, holding. But that's what they were looking for, just to catch them and time their runs properly. <laughs> Header from Ray Ransom. Birmingham City players in the Manchester City side, Tony Cote and the other. Remembered, I'm sure, by Villa fans. And make it a bit awkward for them. Extra awkward. Flickcroft. Here's Holden. What do you make of Rick Holden playing on the right-hand side, Andy? I would be happy if it was Ron Atkinson with that decision. Um, Ray's an excellent crosser of the ball, natural crosser of the ball, and only needs half a yard on the, on the left when he plays. I'm not so sure he'll get that on the right. More than half a yard for Atkinson here with the overdrive, but when it comes to speed, Harry Phelan is certainly worth a mention. Well, I would like to have seen him go and commit Keith Curl a little bit more in that situation. They had a two against two developing, and Dalian Atkinson normally will drive on himself and commit the defender, but he opted for the pass. Keith Curl, one of the game's great sprinters as well. But with the way Phelan and Curl like to play pushing out, it's not a case, perhaps, of City sitting back, as Coventry did here in the last home game. And uh, I know, Andy, you feel that that might just suit Messrs Saunders and Atkinson. There might be room in behind City to make some runs and play to their best strengths. We'll see. Daly. <laughs> this particular marathon started on August the 15th, and it might go all the way to May the 9th before we know the final finishing order. Holden, that's some help. It's a bit late arriving. It's a little uh, think forward by Bonk, but Van Quinn onside. Here's White. Simpson, Phelan's the extra man. With a shot on here for the left back. It's not a very good one. But that's exactly what I was talking about when they get the game with no natural width here. That Ray Hout, you see the number seven's been taken away over there, but it's Fitzroy Simpson who creates the space, leaves acres for Phelan to come into, but it's his first touch that let him down badly. Well, plenty of uh, Republic of Ireland internationals in the match. No surprise to see Maurice Setters here, Jack Charlton's number two today. And the England squad. That's now more and more for his versatility. Centre back today, 
Midfield player at Arsenal on Monday. The regular right back, Aston Villa. Dead. A bit of hesitation by City, and none by the linesman. All out of play. I think the way City are playing, or they've lined up, certainly, I think they'll, they'll really be regretting the fact that Sean Teal's not playing at, because of this near side, there's acres and acres, and the way that Terry Feeling can come into it, then it's there for Neil Cox if he wants to. Now, I'm sure if El Barrett was at right back today, he would be marauding into there as well. I'm not just sure that Neil Cox has got the confidence at the moment to be charging forward, but certainly from Villa's point of view, that's an area they should be looking to get the ball into. Philip Dorn, as you might have seen, sorting out a little altercation between White and Barrett. Richardson's through pass for Saunders. Dean Saunders! Can't end this difficult run for him. And Tony Coton was a most capable goalkeeper there for Manchester City. There's the space. You see, they get it right. And he does everything right in this position. And he's only thwarted by a magnificent save from Coton. up for City. Well, it's not particularly well known that Tony Coton's first senior club was Aston Villa. He was a non-contract player for a few months, but as, in his own words, they bombed him out because he was a Blues fan. That's <laughs> Birmingham City, of course, and he went to sign for Birmingham where he made his league debut. He says Andy Gray will remember him from those days in the mid-70s, but I don't think you do, Andy. I don't remember many young keepers that used to smash them past in those days, Mark, the training. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a fine save, it really was. I mean, there's a lot of people who will be looking at it and say, that's a real chance, it was. But Dean Saunders could have done an awful lot better than that. It was low, it was very close to the goalkeeper's feet, but the quickness and the agility of the goalkeeper there was first class. Here's Reid. He'll be pleased with the way his team have started in terms of their commitment. He'll hope for a bit of better passing from himself and his colleagues. How Fock. White trying to get into top gear here. Earl Barrett, of course, who had a spell with City, shrugged aside by a former teammate. Trying to set up Quinn. Just needed a more decisive ball from White, really. Quinn going in where he's at his best with the header down towards Holden. McGrath on the spot. Here's Curl. Villa trying to push out this time. And it was Simpson who'd made an intelligent run, trying to get in behind Earl Barrett. But Dean Saunders will possibly still be reflecting about this. Yes, he will, but look, look at the quality of his run. There it was that excellent. The keeper stands up, he thinks he's slotted it. Great play from the goalkeeper. But it won't help the number nine's confidence, that's for sure. Well, Dean Saunders did go 12 league games without a goal last season for Liverpool. And uh, he talks about the hot streaks that he has. It's gone cold for him at the moment. But one little break in front of goal, and he might just hit a run that could yet take Aston Villa to the... Premier League title. He's done so much. Let's not forget that for Villa since coming here early in the season from Liverpool. Atkinson. Here's Parker. McGrath. Now Cox. Sanders is always work willingly across the width of the pitch to get involved in the game, not just waiting around the penalty area for others to make chances for him. And it's a corner to Aston Villa, with just over 15 minutes gone, nil-nil here. One way or another, the whole of Manchester holding its breath. Staunton to take. Steve Staunton, who scored twice for the Republic of Ireland, straight from corners. 
And so close there to bending one in by that near post, at that near post. Well, they almost scored against Coventry from the exact same side, exact same area when it was headed off the line. And he's got such good quality, Steve Sutton. He's capable of bending them into that area. And look how close that comes to embarrassing Manchester City. Well, those two uh, goals for the Republic of Ireland, one recently against Northern Ireland, of course, in Dublin, have provoked Steve Staunton to say he's going to get one for Villa before the end of the season. This was very nearly it. Thanks to post. Off the post, yeah. I just wondered, Tony Daly there, who'd actually been standing exactly there about a second before the corner was taken, had he opted to stay there. Atkinson. Richardson. Parker, nowhere. He started to make the run, but I think Gary Parker's a little short on confidence at the moment, and maybe on full fitness as well. Here's White, four up for City. Quinn, Rick Holden, can he reach it? Not before Bosnich. That was a lovely move from Manchester City. Good movement, a good ball in. And this is a lovely little cushion header. But Bosnich is very aware. Not only the first time, but quick enough to get up and collect it again. But that a real warning to Aston Villa. He's conceded only two goals in the last eight games. That's neat work by Houghton. The pass just veered away from Bonk for Parker to collect and to set Atkinson facing the goal, which gets... And that is his strength. One of his major strengths in the game is his power and running ability at players. We're going to see uh, Staunton again here. He hit the post direct from the corner. He's going to take charge at the free kick. They change the angle for him. It's round the wall, but low. And Coton getting most things behind it. Yes, he did. He hits it well enough, but as you can see here from the angle, not well enough to trouble Tony Coton, who, like most goalkeepers, will really be feeling very good after that early save from Dean Saunders. Well, the crowd, anxious, the type of atmosphere that has been experienced recently at Old Trafford when Manchester United were struggling at home to Sheffield Wednesday a week ago yesterday and uh, worried by Chelsea's bright start to the game in their most recent match. Needs something just to get the supporters believing again here for Villa at the moment. Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Simpson. Oh, oh, oh. Might have seen a stud or two coming towards him then. He wasn't best pleased. I think he might have seen 12. <laughs> <laughs> Reed. He certainly went for the ball. Much early by uh, White. It is a. Uh, Pretty brave effort by Niall Quinn to play here. Yes, back on his back in the hospital bed. From Monday night to yesterday's flags up. But the diagnosis about Niall Quinn's back, as I was saying earlier, is basically the problem of wear and tear, the attention that he gets from defenders trying to rein him in. Curl, who would have been up alongside David White if Quinn hadn't made it. In his usual position at the back, takes the free kick. Saunders beating Curl. Atkinson trying to get in front of Bonk and squeeze it wide to Daly, unsuccessful. But uh, White will take this one. Blocked by Barrett. In from Holden. Was up in any case. Just gone halfway in the first half. The match that Aston Villa have to win, they believe. I think everyone believes that, not unless 
we don't win today unless Manchester United completely collapse in the final three games, we really would have an awful lot to do. Ron Atkinson was uh, quoting a newspaper article that he'd read involving an astrologer who uh, predicted that Alec Ferguson would miss out, although he'd win four games in a row, <laughs> which is uh, perhaps uh, the Aston Villa manager grasping a little at straws, but certainly in his mind as we were talking before the game. Flickcroft. Reed. Walker bounce for Simpson. He couldn't keep the ball in. I just wonder after what, what, almost 25 minutes, Tony Daly, who's got great pace and has been pretty much stabbed with the ball in that congested area on the other side. And I just wonder with this big gap here and this near side of the pitch, whether Ron Atkinson is thinking and maybe giving him a little run on this side. But he's certainly capable of playing either wing. But Ron Atkinson knows better than most that the only predictable thing about Tony Daly is his unpredictability. It's a fact, of course, that Graham Taylor was attracted to last season. Daly, part of England's squad in the European Championships, not involved this season because of his early injury. Just had a sprinkling of matches in August before he needed serious knee surgery. He's trying to surprise at Highbury at a crucial stage on Monday. And I think perhaps a lot of neutrals might have written Aston Villa off in that game. On the whole time, a real study and concentration concern here. And the Aston Villa faithful. It's been a testing start for us in Villa. Manchester City have, have arrived here and they really took them under pressure, not allowing them to get to this free-flowing passing game that Ron Atkins and the series team play most of the season. And now it's a test of courage at, at the stage that is for us in Villa for the players to stand up really at times to be counted. The courage to still play, to keep trying to play under all this pressure. And to uh, try and do the difficult thing, not worry if it breaks down from time to time, particularly in this area of the pitch. Staunton. It's a straightforward cross, really easy for Curl. Now, collecting on the way out. So a bit of over elaboration by Barrett. And White. <laughs> Perhaps expecting now Quinn to have the speed that White has himself. Ransom. Here's Richardson. Reed and Richardson, of course, were colleagues at Everton. And won championship together there. The two examples there, if anyone thought Manchester City weren't going to compete today. First one is Richardson picked up the ball. Peter Reed was clattering into him. And then Dean Saunders and Michael, Michael Volk straight in at the back of him. McGrath and Saunders almost sneaking in behind Curl. He just had to reach the ball from the Manchester City viewpoint, and on the stretch he did to frustrate Saunders. Villa's throw. How? Well, just came in front of Saunders. He's trying to use White as the way out. That's another competitive challenge. David White, who was around at Main Road when Earl Barrett came on the YTS scheme to Manchester City. But that's another reason, I think, why Earl Barrett was chosen at centre-back. All week in Birmingham, been taught that it would be C. Stott would be centre-back. But I think Ron Axe has probably guessed Peter Reid's side, and that influenced the choice of Earl Barrett as centre-back with his pace. Cox, can't find the cross, here's Quinn. There's room behind Villa here, but not if you run offside, as Phelan has done. Well, the lack
lack of decisive play from Aston Villa. That's where he moved to the half-hour mark. That's brought Ron Atkinson down to within shouting range of his players. Jim Barron, Jim Walker, Jim Paul <laughs> alongside him, adding further volume. Play line, it's worked. I'll tell you what, that's dangerous. Fitzroy Simpson had absolutely no need to make an early run. You look at it here, look at all this cock. He's the furthest man across it. Fitzroy Simpson just holds a couple of yards. He's got half a pitch to run into. He could have actually held in his own half when he was absolutely safe then. Easy sitting up here. Passes feeding Coton on his stronger foot. Right. McGrath. Right. With the ball as it bounced up. Parker trying to reclaim it for Villa. And uh, Phelan can only run it out for the corner. The moment the referee pointed, Steve Staunton sat across from left back. To take this corner on the villa right. <laughs> Daly and Atkinson waiting by the near post. Saunders for any sort of flick on or for the deeper ball, which on the grass. Well, this time he opts for a bit more distance to the back post. Looking for McGrath coming in there. But there's just a little bit too much bend on it. Set pieces bringing a little more threat than free play at the moment. But they did manufacture the chance that Dean Saunders couldn't take early in the piece. There's no need for panic from Aston Villa at this stage. Patience may well be a virtue for them. to get into proceedings, really. And this time it's a combination of White and Flipcroft who caught the eye of the linesman. Parker, Bonk, ready for dealt with it. Our friend Gary Parker can be a major player in the proceedings. Just a little touched-off pass. Yes, yes, yes! Deflected, and that's a corner. And that's why I think he was brought back into the side today at home. Ron actually would have known that Manchester City as a back four like to push forward. And he would have thought, well, there's one player that will find that little pass, that little little gap for his front two, it could well be Gary Parker. And right by the flag that says good luck, Villa from the city of Manchester. <laughs> Parker takes this corner. Headed over by Neil Cox, who's graduated to England under-21 status. Played in Turkey last month as a midfield man. Well, coming up tomorrow night, Ipswich and Norwich, the East Anglian derby. Plenty of passion there at Portman Road, live on Sky Sports. From the Orchard Glass, Stockport and Wigan. Live on Tuesday. Keep going. Richardson. That's uh, straightforward for Coton. So much of this match you sense being played by Villa in the mind. If you remove the context in the terms of the league position, I'm sure we'd see a different, more dynamic display. But of course, you can't do that. After all, pleased to find themselves pressing at the top of the Premier League. Well, dealing with pressure as well as Paul Park Parcel have been the, the eventual league champions, Martin. If you can't deal with the pressure when it matters, then you won't win titles. Could have 
holding there. And, uh, that's Holden. And Manchester City have to retreat. How? Just can't get a grip in an area that's been so strong for them for so long this season. That's midfield. Feel. A chance against Houghton and sending Phelan in behind Cox here. Can Quinn reach it? He does! That's authentic Manchester City, authentic Niall Quinn, and Aston Villa are a goal behind at home. Ron Atkinson has to take it on the chin. Well, this is a goal of quality from start to finish. Fitzroy Simpson's lovely ball. Feel its pace, but it's the quality of his cross. It's perfect, and now Quinn doesn't miss those. It's the quality of the ball in that makes the job very easy for Niall Quinn. And Quinn out from the uh, hospital bed into uh, a really prominent place in the Premier League. And Manchester City have uh, silenced the crowd here. Quinn will feel at the moment it's well worth playing through the pain. Goals haven't been too easy for him over the season. But that was a cross from Terry Phelan. At the time. But perhaps City haven't got to him often enough. Daly. Curl across, but the whistle is gone. Well, they just need to take a minute or two to compose themselves now, Aston Villa. I and mean, that's a real blow to them. And this is what we said beforehand, the three out, the number 70, who likes to tuck in on this right-hand side. It did leave the space, and it does leave the space for Terry Phelan. He's got probably as much pace as anyone in the, in the Premier League. Really did trouble Cox. You see the number four, the new Cox in the picture. He was really troubled by Phelan's pace there and could do nothing about it. Well, Fitzroy Simpson took a chance against Ray Houghton. He could have lost the ball, but he got the better of him. One against one, took him out of the game and just stuck it in there for Phelan. And not many can catch him, but we talk about it all the time, Mark, and the difficulty, the difficult part of that move is a cross. That's the skill for me. Niall Quinn will tell you, if he gets crosses like that, he'll find it hard to miss. What sort of cross will Steve Thornton supply here after the treatment to Ray Ransom? Competing for it. Well, when there was talk at Old Trafford yesterday of uh, whether Manchester City would want to win this one, Alec Ferguson said, uh, I've no doubts about Peter Reid, and he will prepare his players properly. <laughs> Having a bit of a slip and a slide there. The turf. Just creased a little bit by Drizzle today. Saunders coming back. Not seeking to gain an advantage, but the linesman really had to wave the flag there as Dalian Atkinson was wondering whether he'd be allowed to chase on in behind City. Eight minutes left in the first half. And an air of increasing anxiety around Ron Atkinson and Aston Villa. Chameleons, really, Manchester City. You never quite know how you're going to see them. The club, traditionally mercurial. But they're 10th in the table, if you look in your morning papers. If they were to hold on and win here, apart from the ramifications involving Villa, City would go up five places to fifth. It's plenty to play for in itself. thing in all recent weeks, Martin, I've been surprised about. Is that man there? I don't know what his level of fitness is at the moment, but I think when you go into games, particularly against Coventry last weekend, and today again, and you're looking for something, if it's not going your way to change it, when you put on somebody like Big Cyril, who really is 
like now quite an aerial threat and you, you can then if your pass is not flowing you can then opt in you throw one or two crosses in there and have somebody like Vic Cyril charging in and maybe getting a few drops and I don't think Villa possess that at the moment with Saunders and Atkinson and things aren't going well for them Villa haven't lost at home in the Premier League since November when Norwich came here and won 3-2 there's one relevance about that, in that Sean Teal was missing from the Villa defence that afternoon. Saunders, how? Now Aston Villa do have to stand up and be counted. Need to be some strong-minded players here to express themselves. against a team that are really working hard to uh, spoil uh, any celebrations of victory. And against a crowd that's increasingly edgy. That was unlucky, that was probably the best passing movement of the game. Must have strung 10, 12 passes together there and just didn't connect with Gary Parker's three run. But that's a positive sign. Simpson. Feeling the providers for Quinn's goal. Fox's yes. clearance, more height than length. Wide for Phelan. And no off the cuff move to bring Manchester City the goal, a strategy that was thought out to get Terry Phelan in by Peter Reid and his planning for today's game. Difficult though it was, not knowing who would be fit for him. Atkinson trying to help redress the balance here. It would be such a lift for Villa if they could level it before half-time. Confusion there. Felt a little bit for Dalian Atkinson. It's hard enough running away from Keith Kill, but when he's backed by Terry Fulin, really move. Here's Flickcroft. Well, Quinn could have uh, let it run anyway. Whether he was pushed is academic now. So Simpson was clear behind him. McGrath. Now, who learnt so much with Liverpool about dealing with these. High pressure situations. Saunders. Can he take it beyond Bonk? All he gets is a corner. But that might be a road to recovery for Aston Villa. I think that's the connection they would be looking for. They'd be looking for either Saunders or Atkinson to get on Michael Bonk in the one against one. They would fancy their chances pace wise, but in that occasion, Falk does very well indeed. McGrath going more towards the middle of the goal this time. And it's dropped off the top of the net. It's a corner we've seen Aston Villa use, not just in this game, but remember Dean Saunders scoring down at Bath against Bristol Rovers in the cup beyond the far post. That was the station that he'd taken up then. strike force that Ron Atkinson has said he's going to stay with whatever happens over the remaining games in the firing blank so far Luffy left to Daly now Phelan Simpson saw possibilities by switching the play. Saw a glory cross field pass there, but if he had just kept his head a little bit, they had a two against one situation developing down here. The terrible feeling that I've never seen. But as we approach half time, if it stays like this, I just wonder if Ron Action will send the team out again in this same formation. I feel sure he'll change something there at half time. Tony Daly hasn't had the impact that I think the manager would have expected from him. And with Dwight York on the bench, that may be an area he looks to change, and he may change him tactically. 
And I don't think we'll send the team out certainly in the same way. Without a three and it's here at half time. Uh, York was the leading scorer last season. And Damien Atkinson was injured for so long. And of course Dean Saunders was uh, working out of Anfield. But Manchester United will argue that they have made their own luck recently. Villa feel that they're due a little break, something to fall their way. And with an extraordinary comeback against Sheffield Wednesday. That shot on Monday from Coventry's Roy Wegerly that hit the inside of the post and stayed out. And then two goals rather gifted to them yesterday by Chelsea. But they've been in these situations, they've been a goal down at home, Manchester United, over the last couple of months, and they've shown enough strength and character to reverse that situation, and that's exactly what's required from the Aston Villa players today. They've got to show that strength, they've got to show that belief that they can reverse a 1-0 at home at half-time and turn it into a victory. Closing seconds of the first half have been played out here in near silence. That's the agony that the Aston Villa supporters are going through, but they, from their point of view, should get their minds clear of the need to worry. And it's a very tentative shout of come on Villa, isn't it? <laughs> Hardly say that's body and soul behind the team. And that's what they need. They need help from every quarter. Stoppage time before the half time break. We'll get the thoughts of Sean Teal and Peter Wood. We'll be worried from the Aston Villa viewpoint, very worried indeed, because a goal here from a player who was only pass fit this morning. Ron Atkinson makes tracks down the touchline to have his say to his team who haven't really performed as Villa would have liked. Manchester City are doing their bit. They're a goal up here at Villa Park at half-time. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Super Sunday. Aston Villa nil, Manchester City one. Three, tar three shots from Villa, two on target, two from Manchester City, one on target. They haven't yet forced a corner, City, but they do lead by that all-important goal. Who would have thought? Our guests, Peter With and Sean Teal, the Villa defender who's injured. What's it going to be like in that dressing room right now, Sean? Um, there'll be a few harsh words being said, I would think. Um, the lads haven't come out and, and, and done what the gaffer would want them to do. Um, and they'll be putting it all to right now. Um, a few teacups flying about? Well, I don't know if it'll get that, quite that bad. I mean. But uh, the gaffer will get them sorted. He knows where it takes, he can motivate his players. And I'm sure you'll see a different Villa in the second half. He needs to. Villa trailing by a goal to nil. Though Dean Saunders, Peter, had a wonderful opportunity early on, didn't he? It's great. I mean, he's done very, very well. I mean, he's uh, he's knocked it round. Curl, he's gone through. It's on his left foot. I keep on seeing these chances. I mean, he just knocks it through there. He's now one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, and he tries to just knock it into the corner. I mean, in my situation, I would have blasted it anyway. But I think he's, he's thought that he's going to get it just past him and to be fair Colton's done ever so he stood up I mean the goalkeeper stood up right to the end and then he's, he's made the dive um, it's a great chance you know it's a great chance when you're going through that spell they're not going in and that's what's happened there Steve Staunton hit the post direct from a corner I think he said in today's match program he's going to score again like this before the end of the season you could have done with one here Sean couldn't you yeah that's for sure um, Stan's got a very sweet left foot and he uh, I mean, he really does bend them in. Um, but he usually aims for the far post, right in the top corner of the far post. So I was a bit surprised when he bent it in so sweet into the near. Um, but it nearly caught Tony Colton by surprise. Um, I'd be happy if he gets one today like that. <laughs> I think the difference with that as well is that 
the Villa players there, if one of them would have stayed in the air, I mean, they stood there, if one of them would have went across the keeper or went across the... It might have gone in because it, it unsights him in the end. There's the goalkeeper and the defender both going for the ball and no Villa player around. As Martin said in commentary, of course, he scored like that for the Republic recently. Here's the goal, scored by Niall Quinn. And beautifully created and carved out from City's point of view. Yeah, I think that it's... Uh, I was always a bit worried because... Having worked with Terry Phelan, I know what he's like, I know what his pace is like. He hits a great ball in once he gets past it. And uh, Quinny, I mean, you just can't give him that much room. I think that with the goalkeeper missing the other one, where he come out and got and clattered Quinn, I think that maybe he could have come for this. You know, he started to come and then he stopped. A bit dubious when I see it from that angle, though. But I think that probably be, because of that, I think Phelan here, I mean, this is he's in his elements, running down the line, chasing on. And uh, to be fair, uh, Coxie lacks a bit, a bit of pace for that. I mean, he gets it brilliantly. Great header. If you'd have been playing, Sean, would you have been marking Quinn? I would have liked to have thought I'd have been marking him, yeah. Um, I mean, you can't say yes because you don't know in the, in the situation of the game. Um, but feeling's done fantastic. It's a great ball in first time. And uh, that's what Nile does best get, back, get to the far post and bury them. OK, well, what have Villa got to do about this? What can they do about this? What will they do about this? The gaff will get them all wound up now and it'll be uh, 100 mile an hour at all costs now. I mean, if we lose today, it's it's going to be very, very difficult for us. And we just can't... Your lives, your lives depend on it now. You've got to go out for 45 minutes and do everything. The whole season's work, as we said at the top. Attacking the whole end in the second half, Peter, which they like to do, Villa. Yeah, I'm just a bit disappointed with a few of the players. I mean, Andy had said before the game about Tony Daly, you don't know how he's going to perform and to be fair he's not even got in the game I think he's had one run and uh, Dalian Atkinson has uh, been a bit disappointing we've just made a few marks I mean I've just put Dalian Atkinson won't run the channels I mean what you want you want people to get in the channels and turn them and he's just not running the channels Dean Saunders is making all the runs I think it was 44 minutes when we looked and he ran once in the channel so he's got to he's got to do that I think that he will wind them up and I think that they've, they are going down to the whole 10 I'm a bit disappointed with the support at the moment. They seem as tentative as what some of the players feel on the, uh, you're on the pitch. that stage of the season, Peter, isn't it? Aston Villa yes, nil, Manchester City won, back with the whole of the second half, live in a moment or so. Welcome back. Coming up tomorrow night, Ipswich against Norwich live. Seven o'clock kickoff on the Monday night football and Tuesday night. Autoglass Trophy Northern Area final second leg. Stockport Wigan. Wigan lead 2 1 from the first leg. 1 0 here to Manchester City. Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Thank you, Richard. 45 minutes for Aston Villa to show that they're not quitting on the championship chase. Their problems very succinctly put into perspective by Peter Wythe and Sean Teal. David Atkinson perhaps starting the second half like a man who might have had a flea or two in his ear from the manager. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind that Daly and his... Uh, Ron's got a great admiration for him, but feels he doesn't produce his best all the time, and he'd have given him a flea in his ear. Saunders. Trying to make his own luck. Little touch from Quinn, the scorer of the game's only goal. How? I'm sure Manchester City have come back out here expecting Villa to really try and pile on the pressure in the opening minutes. I don't think you would have needed a crystal ball to have known that. I think Peter Reid would, would have been able to say to his players, listen, Ron Atkinson will have certainly had a goal, but most of them in the first half, and get them fired up. Fuck. Now Quinn. Here's Houghton. Trying to make it happen for Aston Villa. Daly loitering on the left. It's deflected! Or when you want to go, a chance right on the goal line is a dream come true in his 12th match since his last goal at the 11th hour in the championship chase. Dean Saunders starts scoring again. 
And what a part the deflection plays. And he looks to nick it in and gets a deflection off Ranson. No matter how bad your goal stat is at the moment, you're not going to miss these. In fact, it's almost going in here. We can see as it just takes a deflection. It could even have been going into this far corner on its own, but no, it needed that vital touch from Saunders. What a start for Aston Villa. They have lit the gas. Staunton. Time coming, number 19. Reed. Well, Ransom is offside. A goal that may well have been cheered all round the ground. <laughs> and if you're suffering, Martin, you couldn't have asked for an easier chance than that, can you? Look at the delight. I suppose most of it's relief, it's on his face. Well, it had to happen sometime, but for Villa it was paramount that it happened sooner rather than later. 1-1, one, one. Gary Parker, Villa alive. And offside against Houghton. But, Kat, I think it's noticeable to everyone, it's certainly noticeable to you and I sitting here at the game, but I'm sure to even the people at home, the difference in tempo that's suddenly around here, and not just after the goal, before the goal. They started the second half, the pace was up, the tempo of the game was up from Aston Villa, and they've had the reward. They talk about making luck, their own luck, they got that little bit of luck with that crucial deflection off Ray Ranson's head that took the ball into Saunders' path to the goal. And on this occasion, it's the team and the goal scorer who've lifted the crowd. hasn't looked altogether happy in this unfamiliar role. Paul McGrath is in a mountain at the back for Aston Villa, recognised throughout the game, particularly by the PFA award. White for Quinn. Getting a shot inside, stepping McGrath rather easily then. Bock. Ransom. Daly. Typifying this new commitment from Aston Villa. Oh, that must have been close. I think it's Dean Saunders is offside. More in the centre, yes. Yeah. I think Atkinson had timed his run to perfection here. If you watch it build up, just take a look, it's just at the top of the screen, Dean Saunders is the one, he's given offside. It's frustrating for Dalian Atkinson, who hasn't imposed himself on the game as yet, but he's capable of doing it in a twinkling. And now that Saunders has got going again, maybe it will be Atkinson's turn. His famine has lasted now into a seventh game. And of course, the first part of the, that run without goals in matches when he was playing with the injury and not completing the course. Well, even there, Mark, he's chased a, a, a hopeless cause, basically, daily night, and that suggests to me that his managers had one or two words to him. Because he did it, he forced Michael Vaughan into a mistake. Reid breaks it up for Sydney. McGrath with half an eye on David White. And so was getting on this one. Well, Coton, I think, probably could have collected it in his hands inside the area, but he wasn't going to take any chances. That was Parker picking out Houghton through the centre. And Ray Hout just couldn't get the ball on in behind him and go on towards goal. 
flip crossed. McGrath. On oh, Good Friday, Manchester City led at half time at Sheffield United and uh, couldn't hold on. A different type of pressure put on them in the second half at Bramall Lane. But it's pressure nonetheless. Aston Villa recognising the consequence of failure here and responding to the need to increase their tempo to improve their level of play in most quarters of their game. Richardson. Almost fell for Daly. Villa collectively have got sucked into the centre. Here's Holden. Over McGrath, is it? Not quite. David White hoped it would drop behind the Villa number five. And there's a foul by Flickcroft on Barrett. What you find from Villa as well is that Neil Cox, now he's on the side that his managers at, will be pushing forward into that gap we talked about on that right hand side. Oh, and Barrett, just a slight lack of understanding between two players who don't operate often and as a pairing. Good spot from the referee, that just a little tug from Gillian Atkinson on Keith Curl. So well with Tony Curtin playing when required in the first half, not required that often in truth. But he would have begun to look a more formidable barrier as the match wore on. But they've got the ball past him. Fortunately, with the aid of that deflection to allow Saunders to come in to score. Daly. Here's Cox. Keith Curl leading a chorus of appreciation in the direction of the linesman. Dave Colwell on this near side. Defenders are good at that, they're always very good to turn around and they see that, they push up, they get the offside decision to, to compliment the linesman. That's dodgy, it's well, They might get the next decision then. I think Aston Villa will be quite happy to see Manchester City continue to do that, take a chance in that offside. Hold it. Quite sure where to go. Reed. What a pass. <laughs> Training ground stuff that. Flickcroft. White. Quinn. Force away. Pass McGrath. Flickcroft. Manchester City just trying to get their own coolness back. Try and remember what they were doing well in the first 45 minutes. Flag up again. If you're right, Andy, more ammunition perhaps for Aston Villa at a later stage in the game. Flickcroft. Ransom. White. Staunton stepping in. Houghton. And... Uh, <laughs> Saunders watched what happened from a prone position because he lost his balance trying to get back to the halfway line to stay on side, hoping that there was another Villa player galloping down the left on his feet and in a legitimate position. Didn't quite happen. Reed. And again. Trying to run Parker and doing that. Where he was running wasn't quite so much the city's benefit. Crib. A good touch as the ball dropped. Curls. Head to the left. No chance for Terry Phelan to get that far forward in that instance. Although he was the closest match to the city player to where the ball dropped. Phelan who set up Quinn's header. Give City the lead. 
Lost hitch. He was very sure of what he was doing then as White lunged. Curl. Breaks for Daly. He isn't known for his goal scoring, but when you look back down the records, he's done some damage to Manchester City in the past. A great goal in his fixture here last season. Sco scored a fantastic volley here last season, you're right. But the problems arise from there is that how often we talk about when defenders let the ball bounce from goal kicks. The two centre-backs let it bounce and were immediately in trouble and couldn't clear it. as well. But as the game has gone on, Aston Villa have got better. I think uh, they certainly needed to improve. Parker. Well, if he'd been in a more confident vein of form, perhaps he'd have taken the chance and flung himself feet first as the ball dropped. Never going to be easy. I think it was a bit unlucky. I think had he been able to take it on the volley, it would have been much better. If you can just see, he's always just too far away from him. Simpson. Holden cropping up this time on the left. Oh, that could have come for Quinn or White. I thought one of them got the header on it, Funk. Well, Rick Holden caught Aston Villa out then, having played totally on the right-hand side. He moved to the left, and it was an opportunity, one sense for City here. You see how comfortable he looks off that side. You see El Barrett just gets the faintest touch on it, and that's the only thing that took it away from Niall Quinn. What a difference in Holden, though, as he got himself in that inside left position. It was totally natural for him just to get half a yard on Paul McGrath and produce a quality cross. Also help Villa here that City have had to patch up a number of players to get them out for this match, particularly their two main strikers. And there's not quite the zest in the forward running that there was earlier in the proceedings. Half an hour to go. Aston Villa won. Manchester City won. Dean Saunders equalising Niall Quinn's first half header. close this one but I think you're fine but when he's hit that Tony Cohen makes a spectacular dive towards it but he hits it with the outside of his left foot and from the moment it leaves that you can see it's always drifting wide of the goal well there's no shortage of incentive for Aston Villa here Thing they will have to concede to Manchester United, I think, is the goal difference. Don't really believe they can make too many inroads into United's advantage in that respect. But a win here would keep them just the one point behind the league leaders with three games to go for each of the top two. How? Forceful of the two number fours was the older man. Parker. It's a free kick to Villa. The linesman was wondering whether there was an offside there, but in fact hadn't raised the flag. It wouldn't have mattered in any case. 
against the earlier infringement. And that has gone Villa's way. Out the park to leave it. Staunton tries for goal and might have found it, but for the wailing arm of Tony Coton. Well, that was a better sight from Steve Staunton. Much crisper in an area where he's likely to get a goal. But Tony Coton in the end deals with it quite comfortably. Fellows corner. Coton's catch. The Birmingham City fan is providing a big barrier to Aston Villa here in the West Midlands. Good taste on that, and good kill on the ball. And that one did test the goalkeeper. Little push by Quinn, who looks most aggrieved. But the decision's been given against him. that Manchester City a little more relaxed that they were not relaxed there as uh, Saunders made up the ground to block from Coton but generally more relaxed the Manchester City club after the verdict was handed out by that FA Commission on Friday the suspended sentence hanging over the heads of the City fans a verdict which showed sympathy for their past record of good behaviour but which properly punishes any repetition. Curl. Oh, there was something to aim at on the right for Manchester City. David White had been lost by uh, Steve Staunton. Atkinson. Daily. City suddenly decisive where they've been tentative. McGrath. It makes it all look so ridiculously easy. And that was close. That was close. They always failed players though. They have the pace of Daly and Agus and shouldn't be getting themselves offside as often as they do. They can give themselves now with a new rule. That little half a yard. With all that space to run into, he's just getting ahead of himself slightly. It's a goal kick. I mentioned the foreign goalkeepers. Mark Bosnich from Australia, of course. Eric Torsvet, Hans Segers, Jan Stayskal, Dmitry Karin, who's with Chelsea now, Peter Schmeichel. Jason Kitt and the other Australian who's with Everton, Craig Forrest of Ipswich and Bruce Grobelar. Who says that uh, England produces the best goalkeepers in the world now? Maybe Chris Woods does. And Tony Curtin has staked to claim for the home-based custodians. City's way. Ransom, there's an angle here for Holden, but Earl Barrett saw that coming. Richardson. The header from Atkinson and from Daly. The crowd wanted Atkinson to spot Saunders. He looked back where the ball had come from. He was quite entitled to do that. Daly was in a reasonably promising position, although Saunders through the centre, had he been spotted, would have been the more deadly ball. I think he's lucky to get away with this, Keith Curl. He turns away, and he doesn't get rid of Daly, you see, and he just kind of grabs round. But he's happy to take the free <laughs> kick, you can be sure of that. Ending up looking like old pals from the England squad that they were in together in Sweden. Freeland, which takes some doing, he's accomplished it, needs some support now. 
Goes for the cross. Oh, a handball! Keith Carl gets a certain penalty. And what will Manchester United be saying about that? Well, it's inexplicable. It really is. I mean, it doesn't look any danger at all here as Carl goes up. But you see quite clearly the right hand goes up, knocks it away from Daly and Atkinson's head. And that must have been one of the simplest decisions the referees had to make. Villa have missed their last two penalties, which why the job has gone to Gary Parker. Oh, and it got under. Coton who beats the ground with frustration as Parker pumps the air into light. And Aston Villa are in front by two goals to one in an amazing set of circumstances here. Well, Ron Atkinson said he wanted his team to get some luck. And they've certainly had it today. The first goal, a little deflection helped him. Keith Kerr inexplicably sticking a hand up there and Tony Cotton comes oh so close to stopping the penalty, but all that doesn't matter. Villa and ahead. That's the three-quarter mark of the match. It's been a long, long time coming for Aston Villa, but they've got their noses in front. And will the Manchester United fans let Keith Curl back in the city of Manchester tonight. Well, let's not finish yet. Ransom trying to let it run. Daly trying to earn a corner. But Curl was backpedalling. Daly and Atkinson, in truth, had made a tremendous leap behind him. Whether Curl was aware of that and panicking because of that, a panic reaction it certainly looked. You just don't jump with your hand that high. Certainly in your own penalty area. You can never hope to get away with anything like that. And here's Parker. Well, we talked about Dean Saunders ending a run without a goal. Parker not in the side necessarily to score, but it's his first goal for some three months. Courtesy of the handball by Keith Curl. An aberration that will take a bit of explaining away. Well, have a look at that again as you watch it. Dealing action tools in behind him. And he goes up early. He's up above him, but look, the hand's up almost immediately from Keith Curl. And I don't care how much you panic as a centre-half, you can't do that and hope to get away with it. Freeland, first to a ball that wobbled dangerously in the deep. It was like a volleyball player going for a, a winning smash down over the net. But it could mean losing here for Manchester City. Villa came out, fearing defeat, a goal down at the start of the second half, and now they're sensing victory. Richardson. McGrath. Suddenly every Villa player wants the ball. It wasn't like that in the first half. And Vaughan can only concede another corner. By the by, the ninth goal of the season for Gary Parker is his personal best. That's in terms of league goals, Parker now concentrating on the corner. Coton being impeded. What a wicked corner to deal with for the goalkeeper. Inside the final 20 minutes. And we're at the stage of the season where the finishing line is in sight, but we're really now that Villa are moving on towards what they hope will be another win. We're still not much nearer knowing who's going to press the tape first.
two terrific teams, Manchester United and Aston Villa. Still head to head. But it's been a great response from him. We mentioned before on half time or so that the old Trafford side had found himself one down at home and managed to reverse things. And Villa, that man will have learned a lot from his side today. He's shown great character. People ask when the managers earn their money. Well, Ron Atkinson earned it at half time because he was a man that certainly turned down the attitude of the players and sent them out firing in all cylinders. In one way, you could say. Uh... Alec Ferguson and his money was his response when Manchester United were beaten here by Aston Villa in November. He took the chance in the transfer market with Eric Cantona. It was really Villa who'd uh, beaten United twice, of course, in quick succession in the League Cup as well, who provoked that signing. Will Cantona be the trump card? Standing down the uh, city right for all the effort put into the game by Rick Holden, who spends his time in the week not just preparing for matches but studying on a degree in sports physiology. Wants to stay in the game on the medical side. Mistake by Holden of all people to give it to Saunders. City committing suicide at the moment. That's a corner off curl. Oh, it should be a corner. Well, if the referee didn't see it, surely the linesman must have done. <laughs> I think probably you and I had the best view of that incident in whole ground at the angle we're at. But what a mistake from Rick Holden. With just total lack of concentration, passes it without looking, but they're fortunate. City and then it's Keith Curl who's got pace to get back. But if we watch here, the shot quite clearly comes off Keith Curl's foot. But both officials, well, let's just give them the benefit that they were at bad angles to see that. Up with Fitzroy Simpson, Quinn going in again. White coming in behind him. Quinn was beaten by the height of the ball originally. White by the height of the bounce. Not steered out very effectively by Staunton. Ransom. Well, that was just a little reminder of Phil. I needed one. But Manchester City intent ever see in this game even yet. Curl. This is Gary Flitcroft chasing on. This is Quinn going in. Unfortunately for Villa, McGraw was right alongside him. And uh, just did enough to put off his uh, fellow international. Here's David Brightwell, the younger of the two brothers on the books of Manchester City, who's a centre-back. And it's Rick Holden who's going to be taken off. Uh, will Brightwell go and play at the back, and are they going to send Keith Curl forward? After giving away the uh, penalty, and there's a couple of reasons for pushing him on. Yes, that's the uh, move by Manchester City. Brightwell in the centre of defence with Vong. Curl alongside Quinn, and David White has gone to uh, his uh, role on the right-hand side of City's attack. I'll tell you what, Martin, I think they'll make an immediate response to that. I've got a funny feeling we'll bring on Brian Small as soon as he can here. With David White on the right against uh, Steve Staunton. I know they were concerned about that tear up before the game started. And if there are signs that White might be getting something out of Steve Staunton, you can bet your life it's smaller be on pretty quick. Ransom offside. <laughs> I think we can tell that you used to be assistant manager of Aston Villa, Andy. <laughs> He's going to go and play at left back, of course, against David White. It's a, it's a question. And Gary Parker, who's played his part with the penalty. 
uh, his goal, Villa lead. And Brian Small, I must tell you, I saw the under-21 game in Turkey recently, and he played so well for England. He's arguably England's man of the match. And now he has a specific job to do against David White. I thought he'd make the substitution, but unless Gary Parker's feeling the pace of the game a little bit, I'm a bit surprised that Tony Daly isn't the one to be taken off. I thought he would he would have just moved Steve Staunton one up, taking Tony Daly off, and then he would have had the comfort of knowing that Staunton was there to help Small. Hard for Brightwell here, having just come on against Daly and Atkinson. Daly takes it on, but Brightwell recovers well. Houghton. Staunton. For Houghton, hanging it up towards the far post. Fuller have got no one attacking the ball there. But Staunton's gone into midfield for Villa. Quinn. Twelve minutes left. Here's Reed. Is there going to be a sting in the tail here? Manchester City, Keith Curl who did to start his career with Henry Sersley Wright. He's a wide player up front. He's certainly uh, got the speed to justify uh, the place in attack if they can serve him with the right type of pass in behind McGrath and Barrett. No specific injury, we learn, for Gary Parker, just to change tactically made by Ron Atkinson. Corner for City. Only their second. Flickcroft, who scored from a corner on Monday against Liverpool. Reed Trying to bend it with the outside of the right foot. Went the wrong way, I think. Came off the head of McGrath. Bosnich beating Curl to it. Curl trying to make up for his mistake, and it has been a credit to him and to Manchester City. There's no doubt that uh, back injury hasn't fully cleared up. Flag has stayed down. Heads on. Curl in a chase here with Barrett. Well, now that would have been interesting if it hadn't been a foul. He just seems to slow up your L Barrett. I think you can see there, he just catches L Barrett's right heel there, Keith Kerr. It certainly showed a turn of pace, it would trouble defenders. Brightwell. Ian Brightwell, incidentally, has been out with a serious injury since virtually the turn of the year. Steve McMahon close to a full fitness again. He's going off with City to Japan next week. The match being played out there to raise a few funds for Peter Swales and company in the break caused by uh, the internationals. Mum's telling me he hopes to play a half in Japan. Quite a long way to go to get a comeback match in. I'm trying to keep you in touch with the messages from Ron Atkinson. He'll settle for a win here and not be too concerned about the margin. It's not been an easy afternoon for Aston Villa. Saunders so sets his sights. And it's been a terrific contest between him and Coton. Both have had their moments. Barrett. We're into the final ten minutes. And the Manchester United supporters up and down the land, aching, unusually, for Manchester City <laughs> to score. Well, as you say, if it stays like this, I don't think Keith Curl will be flavour of the month in the red part of Manchester. Quinn. Curl going in. And there's Small, who is a natural defensive player. Well, that was very coolly played by Brian Small. 
That's almost his first touch of the ball, I think. And <laughs> he had to show a cool head there. He's not very aptly named. Broad-shouldered, muscular man. Phelan. Here's Staunton. Oh, Ransom almost running it into trouble there. Now there's that handball by Staunton, not given by the referee. Coton was complaining. Staunton's cross, and it's handball now by the goalkeeper. Well, he had a chance, Steve Staunton there. I think it was handball from him, but not an intentional one, but he had a great chance to put Kevin Richardson free in the box. It's a lovely ball wide by Flipcroft. Ray Ransom, who scored his only Manchester City goal against Aston Villa, that was 12 and a half years ago. Flickcroft, a more likely candidate to get on the target here. That well, was a nice build-up for Manchester City. Keith Kerr showed he could play with his back to goal as well, just holds it up. And Gary Flickcroft, maybe a little bit of tired legs here, just can't keep his shot down. Saunders, and a race here with Bonk. It's well played by the Dutchman. Six minutes to go. Daly. Well, he got past Ransom and then showed too much of it to Bonk. It's a strong finish by Aston Villa here after a very tentative start. Staunton. Cox coming in and making the ball his. Neil Cox! Well, really typifying the way the stock of Aston Villa has risen here as the match has worn on. Yeah, had a chance at Highbury. The same sort of area when he broke through late on and didn't, and didn't hit the target. And again, this is a more difficult chance, but couldn't squeeze it in at that near post. But this is the kind of finish he would have wanted. Sky Sports squad off to Portman Road tomorrow. Live Premier League action for you. Ipswich against Norwich. A derby of real local rivalry. And Stockport against Wigan for a place at Wembley in the Autoglass Trophy. And Saunders surely can't expect to run past Terry Phelan, but he did enough. Make him play it, make him put it out would have been the message from close quarters there. Atkinson not wasting any time, getting the ball back to his team and saying, just keep it going, you're dictating the pace now. I think Manchester City would go away from here with the proper praise ringing in their ears for the way they've approached it, but for the way the winning goal, if it's going to be the winning goal, came about, it may not be the winner. This is Fitzroy Simpson. And it was touched away by Bosnich. What a save. It was a driving run of real danger to Aston Villa. Bosnich takes it all in his stride. He does everything right in going across the goalkeeper. But how valuable a touch will that prove to be? Simpson, who played a part in the setting up of the one goal City have. Oh, and Bonk! I'm not sure it was going in. It was Daly who was guarding the post. Here's Reid, Manchester City coming again. And uh, they're appealing for handball now against Richardson. Certainly not as clear cut if it was handball at all as the curl episode. Flickcroft. Ransom. Staunton can't get it away. In from Flickcroft. Bosnich comes without batting an eyelid. And Aston Villa responding on a couple of occasions in these closing stages to an example set by their goalkeeper. Well, David Brightwell was up a moment or two ago, and I think it was he who knocked the ball across to Michel Vonk. And it looked as though there was plenty to aim at. Let's look back. We can have a look at the corner. They just seem to go to sleep. 
and they all follow the ball out, but Michael Vaughan just nicks in behind Daly and Atkinson there. You can see it's not going in, but had anyone else been following in that little touch from Vault, then they couldn't possibly have missed. Well, I don't think there was quite as much to aim at as maybe our first thought. On the stretch, getting the ball back into the percentage area. Well, I don't think anyone can question the commitment in, of, of the way that Manchester City have gone about this game, Martin. Even now, with two or three minutes to go, when you might have thought they would just be, oh, well, that's it, we've lost the game. They're <laughs> driving forward, trying to get an equaliser. Richardson. Small for Daly. How? Bonk, Daly back to Small. Takes on Ransom. Gonna get a throw, it also takes up a few more seconds. Well, Manchester United came from behind against Sheffield Wednesday. They also did it earlier this year against Sheffield United and uh, against Southampton. Their battling quality is well documented. Villa faced a battle here. And it's a battle they're very close to winning. White. Staunton. Houghton is onside. It's 3-1. Aston Villa finishing here on a very big high indeed. Ron Atkinson knows that all the anxieties in this match and they've been considerable are behind him. Oh, it's a lovely ball through from Staunton. Measures it outside of his left foot. They've got caught. You always sense that sometimes they get caught square. And if there's one man you would want in that situation with a cool head, believe me, it would be Ray Houghton. He has a quick look, he knows he's on side. Look at that for a calm little half volley. Beautiful finish. When the anxiety was considerable, Aston Villa have sorted it out in the second half of Villa Park. more to come here. Atkinson, if he'd had more matches, if he'd had perhaps a more successful time in this match, who knows what might have happened, but uh, he went for the first time, a brilliant ball from Houghton. Again, outside of the foot, and he doesn't get the kindness of bounces here, it's a difficult chance, but I've seen Dylan Atkinson smash him in from there. But they won't be too worried about that. At this stage, of their campaign, the victory is the most important thing, and it's certainly now they've got that. Simpson. Well, that was a type of deflected cross that was uh, so instrumental in the first goal for Aston Villa. Count the scorer of their latest. And City have a corner deep, deep into stoppage time. Saunders. Villa's throw. Paul McGrath, who finished a runner-up with Aston Villa in 1990 and with Manchester United in 1988. And wants to go one better this time as Aston Villa continue the chase and they have cut the gap back to one point again. A real revival here after Niall Quinn has given Manchester City the lead. But then Dean Saunders got his act together again early in the second half to really stimulate the recovery. Ray Houghton also scored late in the half, but the turning point, the handball by Keith Curl which gave Villa the penalty and Gary Parker gave Villa the lead from the spot.
the first Premier League season, giving all football lovers a captivating conclusion. Villa had to win today. They've done it the hard way, really. And now they go to Blackburn on Wednesday, the night Manchester United travel to Crystal Palace, who are battling for their Premier League lives, of course. Still a potential banana skin or two between both clubs and the finishing line. But you have to say there are no room for doubters in either camp. There were one or two doubts in the Villa ranks in the first half. But they recovered their self-belief in the second. And this weekend, the top two clubs have both done their jobs. Aston Villa three. Manchester City won. Nick Collins is waiting down in the tunnel area, and I believe he's got with him Ray Hart. Well, Ray, many congratulations. Just exactly what was said at half-time that prompted such a, an incredible second-half performance? It was unrepeatable, uh, to be honest. Uh, the manager had a go, and rightfully so. We, uh, we didn't perform as well. Our passing was terrible in the first half, and that's the whole essence of our game. Uh, second half, I thought we got the ball down a lot more. And when you pass the fell in the same colour shirt yourself, it does make it easier. Was it nerves? Did that play a part in that first half? Not really, no. Just uh, poor play. I think it's as simple as that. Uh, we went out there and we just never got hold, hold of the ball. Fair play to Man City. They made it very difficult for us. And they got an excellent goal. And obviously it was a uh, uphill from then on. But we showed a lot of character the second half and played the sort of football that we like to play. Well, let's bring Dean Saunders in as well, and we'll run through the three goals in the second half. Dean, first of all, many congratulations on ending your uh, run of games without a goal. That must have been a relief. It was a relief, yeah, because uh, the manager absolutely crucified us half-time because we weren't playing like we could. And, you know, the last 20 minutes is the way we've been playing all season. And um, it's nice to score three goals because we've been scratching about and scoring ones and nil-nil draws. So, uh, you know, the pressure was on us, and we've and we done it second half. Well, two minutes into the second half, a great time to score a goal. I think we can show it to you now. Here we go. Yeah, uh, the ferret's got the ball there and he's <laughs> knocked it out, out to Tony Daly, I think, and he's, he's had one touch and I think it's got deflection and just looped. Yeah, just looped straight on my head. Nearly went over there as well. No, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, it's nice to get him from that range. Well, that really seemed to fire Villa up after that. You're playing with an awful lot of confidence and, as Ray said earlier, the passing game certainly seemed to come back. Um, yeah, we did knock it about, and uh, our midfield got got a grip of the game second half and sprayed passes about, and uh, you know we needed a break, and we got a penalty. Brilliant time for us. What, what was your view of that? It seemed uh, quite extraordinary from the sidelines. Well, Keith Curl's handball. I mean, how close were you? Well, I crossed it, and uh, I was just watching the ball going over, and it looked as if Dalian was going to get on the end of it, and I just seen a hand going up, and uh, I think he must have been off balance, but. We all felt terrible before the game because uh, Man United won yesterday, but once we've seen Taylor's jacket on the tally, <laughs> cheered us all up. <laughs> well, full credit to uh, Gary Parker because he took the penalty at a very important time and uh, scored with it. I think we'll uh, have a quick look at the penalty. Here we go. Yeah, he showed a lot of bottle there. Oh, flipping out. He could have saved it, couldn't I? I didn't realise. Just... I thought he was in the corner, but um, we've had a bit of luck today, which we haven't had in the past. And... Well, it's a vital ingredient at this stage of the, of the championship running, obviously. Right, let's come, um, come back to you, because uh, your third goal, which made it safe, probably could have done with scoring that uh, 10, 15 minutes earlier, couldn't you, and uh, calm the nerves a bit? Yes, obviously, but uh, it wasn't to be, but I'm just happy it went in in the end, because 3-1, uh, we realised that uh, we were going to win the game then. To be fair, I thought I might have been offside. Uh, it's a great ball from Stevie Staunton. Uh, I just can't tell. Maybe uh, Terry Phelan played me on, but uh, the keeper made my mind up for me. Uh, I had the old goal to aim at, and it was just a matter of getting over his head. I think we can show you a different angle of this as well. Here we go, Ray. Well, as I say, same thing. I've just got to get it over him. Uh, fortunately, it's went in the middle of the goal. Uh, well pleased with that. And obviously, we knew the game was over. Well, you took that goal very well. From what you've seen of this Villa side this year, do you think this <coughs> league title is going to go all the way to the last day? Uh, well, you never know. There's nine points to play for, and you know we've got to be looking for nine points and hope Man United uh, blow up somewhere. But, uh, I mean, they're still in the driving seat. Uh, if they win their three games, they win the league. Well, well done, well done today, the pair of you. Terrific entertainment. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Yes, and thank you, Nick. How much more can we all take? Short break. When we come back to Villa Park, we'll be getting the views of Sean Teal and Peter with. And a few more besides, no doubt. Aston Villa 3, Manchester City 1. The big match verdict is next. <laughs> Welcome.
welcome back. The match facts. Aston Villa 3, Manchester City 1. Changed a bit, didn't it, in that second half? 13 shots from Villa, 7 on target. 8 in total from Manchester City, 3 on target. 7 corners from Villa. Good deal of offside decisions. No bookings. That's what we like. Our guests, we have with us Sean Teal, the Villa defender who was suspended today. Peter With and Andy Graves rejoined us. How's your heart? I feel fine now. <laughs> It's um, a long 90 minutes, though, wasn't the it? Gaffers, the gaffer's half-time pep talk works as usual. Works a treat. Dean Saunders confirmed what you thought. He was going to give them a roasting at half-time. Oh, it was obvious. Um, the lads looked jaded and, and uninterested, to be fair. And uh, the gaffer's picked them up, shook them about, slapped a few and whatever, and out they go. 1-0 to Manchester City at half-time. Niall Quinn was the goal scorer. Peter, you take this this time. Yeah, I mean, feeling's gone. Great run, got round the outside, brilliant cross, early ball. Goalkeeper undecided. You don't let him have that space in the box, I'm sorry to say. Reminiscent of this, isn't it? And he was never going to miss it, was he? Was oh, it? no. With Quinny when he was in there like that. And I think that was a goal that actually rattled Villa a little bit. I think after that, they looked a little bit lost, and, and it, it really did shake them, this goal. But it was on the cards with feeling raiding down that, that side. Do you still well, think I... the keeper maybe could have come, Peter? Well, well I haven't seen it from behind the goal, seen it from there, but seen it from behind the goal, he half come and then went back. So, I, really, with the pace that it was knocked in, probably he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have been able to come. 1-1, one, one. Dean Saunders got the equaliser, ending that barren spell going back, what, 11 matches? And, Sean, you think this could just spark him back into life in front of goal? Yeah, I mean, D Dean's that type of player. He, he always says he scores in runs. Um, well, he's had a bad run of 11 games, now he could have a good run of 11 games. Three this season and the, the first eight of next year. With a bit of luck. <laughs> <laughs> first cross that Mr Daly's got in. Yeah. But, bit mean, of a deflection. Yeah. The first bit of luck, maybe. Uh, they've yeah. been talking about they're not getting yeah. any, and this is a huge slice, because yeah. probably Tony Coton is just going to pluck that one out of the air, isn't he, at the near post? Well, that's what Dean does best, to be fair, gets on the end of little bits. And tell you who does brilliant in that, Sean, is, is Ray Houghton. If he'd have passed the ball to Tony Daly too early then, then Ray Rice would have been able to go in and close him, Richard, a lot earlier. But he could delay it and delay it and delay it, and that allowed Tony Daly to put the cross in first time. 1-1. One, one. And then Villa edged in front as a result of a penalty. Now, what on earth was going through Keith Curl's mind here? Andy? <laughs> who knows? I mean... <sighs> He's caught under it. You can see Daly and Axon is well up above him, but what's gone through his mind is that only Keith Kill would be able to answer that question. But he couldn't have in a million years thought, I'm going to get away with this. Then we all had the same thought, didn't we? Who is going to take this penalty? What courage from Gary Parker. But only just Peter, wasn't it? Yeah, to be fair, the goalkeeper dives over it. I mean, he's... Uh, it's one of them situations, isn't it? You're taking it in the halt and <laughs> there's a full house and he's... Um, <laughs> All credit to him, to be fair, I mean, to take it there and to, to hit it. You just think to yourself in, in the back of your mind that you're just going to go up and blast it, really. You know what the situation was? The penalty was given and all the Villa players went, oh, penalty! As soon as they gave it, they all went... Who's <laughs> 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 <was> taking it? <laughs> Gary Parker did. 3-1, Ray Houghton. This out of the Anfield manual, really, wasn't it? Created by Steve Staunton. Yeah, great ball. He's doing brilliant. Superb ball. I thought he played ever so well. To be fair, mm. I think that when he played at left back and when he moved into midfield, he he done brilliant, and that's a great finish. I mean, he's uh, he's right that the goalkeeper has made his mind. When you get in them situations, you're thinking he's had a quick look up. Mm. To be fair, I thought he'd uh, he'd gonna be fair. It looked like he got a hand to it, didn't it, the keeper? You couldn't you couldn't want a better player, could you, Sean, at Villa in that situation than Ray Houghton? No, I mean Ray's Ray's as cool as a cucumber. I mean, he, he tries that all day in training anyway, trying to chip goalkeepers. Um, so it comes natural to rate, really. Let's have a look at the Premier League table after all of that. No change in that bottom half, <laughs> as we said at the top of the show. Three from five, really, at the bottom end. It's all very tight down there, and we're at Portman Road tomorrow to see Ipswich play Norwich. They're not really out of it yet, Ipswich Town. They need three more points. Leeds, Everton, Southampton, Arsenal and Coventry making up the bottom half. Top half looks like this. Wimbledon. Manchester City, who lost today here. Chelsea, Liverpool, as high as they've been all season. Sheffield, Wednesday. Tottenham, sixth. Queen's Park Rangers, five. Blackburn and Norwich, fourth and third. Villa, second. They've closed the gap again, back to just one point. Manchester United stay on top. We'll be hearing from Ron Atkinson and the Villa fans after the break. At Villa Park this afternoon, Aston Villa have beaten Manchester City by three goals to one. And so it goes on. On 
for Monday Night Football in association with Fosters. Fierce local pride is at stake tomorrow as Norwich try to overturn their 2 0 defeat by deadly rivals Ipswich earlier this season. It's all or nothing in the Premier League. Ipswich Norwich live tomorrow at 7 only on Sky Sports.